Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and a very hearty welcome to you all. What a privilege it is to celebrate such a special occasion with old and new friends. 1999 is a very special year for me, as it marks my 21st anniversary. Yes, believe it or not, the original monocoque hull concept was first devised in 1977. Travel with me as we rekindle memories of the good times and disappointments we have shared since my birth. Landmines are among the most treacherous weapons used in conventional warfare. They strike indiscriminately and never miss, continuing to kill long after hostilities have ceased. The hippo and buffalo troop carrier vehicles and their crew had to contend with these inhumane weapons daily during the South African Security Forces' involvement in the low-intensity border war in the 70s. It wasn't long before the hippo and buffalo began to feel the punch, and eventually they could no longer be operationally repaired at a cost-effective rate. At the same time, the then South African police force had indicated the need for a special multi-purpose vehicle for use in Africa's infamous difficult terrain. Under Project Geisha, the Applied Chemistry Unit of the CSIR began research and development work and constructed the first monocoque hull in 1977 using a hippo body and Bedford components. They named it the Crocodile. If looks had been the deciding factor at this stage, the vehicle would never have been developed further. The South African police was operationally committed to the war in the then Rhodesia and the border conflict in Southwest Africa, now known as Namibia. They were very conscious of the need for a replacement for the hippo, which, owing to its instability, had serious shortcomings in off-road applications. At some stage during all this activity, the first production order for 30 vehicles was placed and was followed by a further order for 155 to the company Henrid Freuhoff. UCDD delivered all my driveline components, while TFM constructed my body and did the final assembly and delivery. Once Arms Corps' technical personnel had been introduced to my production version, they suggested the prototype vehicle be upgraded with a turbo engine and 1,400 by 20 tires. The report of this operational evaluation, as well as feedback from the Kufut teams in Southwest Africa, led to several modifications. And from 1981, I became known as the Casper Mark IIA. Smaller modifications later placed me on Mark IIB and Mark IIC status. Person, I considered border war conflicts to be the real test of my capabilities. Mines were detonated almost daily, and I had to perform follow-on cross-border operations. Believe me, traveling through dense bush under the constant threat of landmines is no joke. Weather conditions were extreme. Summer temperatures reached 40 degrees Celsius during the day, and in winter dropped as low as minus 10 at night. To make matters worse, we also had to contend with rain and marshland. Sometimes, infantry companies only advanced two kilometers in three days. I can recall many times when bridges had to be built with trees so that we could cross riverbeds. Sometimes the driver's judgment was not so good, and we had a hell of a time recovering a vehicle from the river. When crossing roads, my crew first had to do a sweep with detectors to minimize the likelihood of detonating mines before my friends and I could cross. My crew and I had to be tough in our encounters with the bush that scratched our bodies and the sun that burned us to a cinder. At night, the tension was palpable, and the cold cut through us like a knife. But our hardships were all worth it in the end. When we reached our destination safely, we could look back proudly and share some emotional moments together. Ah, we were a great team. Of course, sometimes we did not reach our destinations in one piece. Because of my high level of mind protection and mobility in the bush, 
the enemy laid specific mine patterns with large amounts of explosives. They also set ambushes and used anti-tank systems against us. I clearly remember the day my crew and I were ambushed. A TMK-2 anti-tank mine penetrated my guts, and the ensuing shrapnel caused extensive injuries, which eventually led to the deaths of four of my crew members. This was indeed a, a sad day. The first South African police cusper to arrive at Sector 10 was immediately ordered to do a reconnaissance with hippo vehicles. It wasn't long before we detonated the mine with the right front wheel. My crew escaped with no injuries at all. This incident boosted confidence considerably, and a message was sent to Pretoria to continue with production. At 101 Battalion, in the then Sector 10 operational area, the Casper was first used by Colonel Tom Ferreira, from where the name TFM was adapted to Tom Ferreira's men. The first 12 Caspers were allocated to his team. Casper serial number TFM 11666 had an interesting history with 101 Battalion and was known as the Devil's Casper. It was the first Casper of 101 Battalion to detonate a mine and also the first to detonate two separate mines on the same day. In both incidents, the vehicle was repaired under operational conditions. Sadly, TFM 11666 was also the first Casper in which serious injuries to my human friends occurred. On the day it happened, we were travelling through dense bush and drove into an ambush. An enemy soldier, positioned above us in a tree, fired a 60mm SKS rifle grenade onto the roof of the Casper, which detonated at the commander's hatch, causing serious facial and chest injuries to some of my crew. One of them passed away recently. On another occasion, a fellow Casper was travelling at 80 kilometres an hour when it detonated a mine under its right front wheel and overturned. One crew member broke his collarbone, and another suffered a broken right leg. I also remember the day one of my fellow Caspers detonated a double TM-57 mine with its front wheel on a tar road near Alpha Tower. The crew was flung out and slid over the rough tar surface, but only suffered minor scratches and bruises. A happier memory is the day TFM 11666 was painted pink and donated to the local creche for the children's playground. Undoubtedly, the threat my crew feared the most was the RPG-7 anti-tank weapon. I recall several occasions when projectiles penetrated my body from the side, killing the crew members who were in the direct line of fire. A wooden liner of 18mm chipboard was later fitted to my interior to reduce the spalling angle of shrapnel and restrict injuries to the crew. We Caspers were doing a pretty good job, as we were tough, reliable, cost-effective, and always willing to work. It wasn't long before we were being used in other roles. My cousin, Plofader, was used to breach conventional minefields, while some of us were converted into ambulances and command vehicles. More recently, other Caspers were converted to 81mm mortar, and 106mm recoilless gun carriers. Altogether, 1,700 of us were produced, 1,520 for the South African forces, and 180 for foreign customers. During operational service, we Caspers probably detonated more than 360 anti-tank mines, many of which were multiple mines laid in specific patterns to destroy me and my crew. For those statisticians among you, consider these facts. Over a period of four and a half years, 229 mines were detonated, causing injury to 252 soldiers, resulting in the death of 12. Although this is very distressing, the good news is that the greater part of my crew remained safe when traveling with me. We also proved ourselves in humanitarian operations throughout the world, such as Project Terra Limpa in Mozambique. Steel wheels enabled us to drive through anti-personnel minefields which had been laid years ago 
and are regarded as unsafe to clear by hand. Clearing the Kavora Basa power line from Sondo to South Africa was another tough job. In only two months, we covered a distance of 1,800 kilometers through dense bush. No wonder this project is jokingly referred to as the longest safari rally with armored cars. At IDEX 97, my high level of mine protection was effectively demonstrated when my crew and I detonated two South African number no. 8 mines simultaneously, one under each rear wheel. Note the confidence my crew had in my protection. Over the past 21 years, we Cuspers have become a trusted friend to many soldiers, policemen, and users throughout the world. Special memories will be treasured for many years to come. I understand that we may be called upon to operate in peacekeeping missions. If that happens, I have only this to say. Just make sure that my logistical backup is available, and I won't let you down. My pioneers need to be congratulated for they were indirectly responsible for saving countless military and civilian lives. Gaspers have gained a worldwide reputation as the safest mine-protected vehicle ever to be developed and put into full-scale production. Our operational success with various forces and in different theatres throughout the world have demonstrated that a monocoque hull design was the correct way to go for wheeled mine-protected vehicles. Many other products have followed this approach, such as the Emphazi, Mamba, RG-31, and Cobra. It has been wonderful to meet old and new friends on this special occasion. Thank you to everyone who helped make this day possible. The realistic outdoor display brings back many memories, which will be talked about for years to come. I wish all of you the very best for the future. I salute you.